This year's festival is dedicated to the memory of the great Michael Powell, three of whose films will be presented by way of tribute by the National Film Archive, who've done so much to preserve old and classic pictures. Film preservation is also a big concern in the United States, on which subject Tom Brook reports from New York. This film vault on an Air Force base in Dayton, Ohio, contains the collective memory of the 20th century, the original negatives of legendary Hollywood films. These are the survivors. Thousands of other films are gone forever. Preserving and restoring what is left of Hollywood's fragile heritage has become a major challenge. The dimensions of the problem are quite staggering. Of all the films made in America before 1951, only half exist today. The remainder are lost, destroyed, or they're beyond the state of repair. We all have this idea that when you say, oh, your negative's in the vault, you have this idea that it's in heaven, you know, so that nothing could possibly happen to it. But in fact, those films are sitting in cans, and those cans uh, have to be protected against moisture and, and the, other, uh, the other deteriorating forces. Many other films, like Citizen Kane, King Kong, and Chaplin's earliest films will never be seen as they first appeared in theaters due to the loss of the original negative. One of the most active film preservation operations in America is located in Dayton. Here, the Library of Congress has been hard at work, preserving thousands of old black and white movies shot on nitrate film. Over the years, nitrate film degrades into a highly combustible powder. The former curator of Britain's National Film Archive, David Francis, has been brought to Dayton as a consultant. He wants to do more than just preserve these old, unstable nitrate films. In preserving, if you treat that word in its probably, uh, you know, sort of most accepted sense, you are basically copying the best material you have available. And so that can be a relatively simple thing. You, you may be just putting the negative onto the printer and making a fine grain from it. But I think now um, every archive wants to go beyond that. They want to compare all the copies that are available in their own collections and hopefully in the collections of other archives in the same country and perhaps throughout the world. Um, so really, once you start talking about restoration, you're talking about a lot of work. If you look very closely at that splice, you can start to see uh, brownish tinges around it. The lab supervisor in Dayton, Ken Weissman, is holding the negative from Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, the actual film that passed through the camera on a Hollywood soundstage more than 50 years ago. The version of Mr. Smith that has been circulating since 1951 contained a section of non-original negative, which gave the film a faded look. Ken Weissman and his colleagues tracked down the original missing negative, spliced it back in, restoring the film to its original form. For those involved in this time-consuming restoration work, it's a labor of love. It's amazing. There have been times where I've literally been felt teary-eyed over, over seeing something on the screen and, and seeing it projected in, in, in such a way that it, it is truly the way it was meant to be, or at least the way we feel it was meant to be. You can tell the politician to go on that bit of paper now. That's the bit that's missing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Some restoration work is even more elaborate. Last year, Lawrence of Arabia, David Lean's masterpiece from almost 30 years ago, was virtually remade. Peter O'Toole was brought in to re-record lost sections of dialogue. All you want is someone holding down the Turkish right. But I'm going to give him Damascus. We'll get there before you do. The original Lawrence of Arabia ran three hours and 42 minutes at its world premiere. 20 minutes were then cut out so cinemas could squeeze in an extra showing. 15 minutes more were cut so the film could be shown on television. The cutout section, scattered across two continents, had to be retrieved. Columbia Pictures spent over £300,000 restoring the film, but it proved worthwhile because when the film was re-released, it made more than £3 million at the box office. Hello once again and welcome to... Preserving films does make economic sense. It's becoming profitable. Cable TV stations in America are running more and more old films. What we have found over the years is if you keep preserving things, something will come along which will make it economically sound for you to have done so. There are movies that we preserved 10, 15 years ago and have not used since that all of a sudden have a purpose and have a use. So really it's a, it's a sound economic thing to do because somebody's going to come up with a new way of showing movies and if it's uh, satellites to your garage. But there still isn't enough money for all the preservation work that needs to be done. Earlier this year, a number of leading directors banded together to persuade the Hollywood studios to lend financial support. The results have not been impressive. 
Some filmmakers think the studios could be doing more. Every studio, I think, needs to go backlog and, and, and become little Indiana Joneses, become little adventurer archaeologists and find out what they've got in the vaults that uh, we might enjoy and, and, and help save some of these films and help save, save some of their own classics. Time is running out. Thousands of films have deteriorated beyond repair. But not everyone believes lost films are gone forever. I don't believe that. I, do, I think films are temporarily mislaid, not lost. I like to believe that somewhere out there you're, you're going to find the lost films, and uh, it's just a matter of time. I wonder where Helen is. She should be here by this time. And one lost film did recently reappear. For 50 years, it's been known that Howard Hughes shot part of his epic Hell's Angels in primitive colour. But the film was lost until a copy was found in the private library of the late actor John Wayne. Oh, Helen! Roy! This is the only known colour footage of Jean Harlow, shot in 1930 when she was 19. It provokes an almost visceral response, capable of persuading even the most hardened cynic that old films really do need to be preserved. Nice to think there might be even more little treasures waiting to be rediscovered.